One of the great joys of making a film like this is the collaboration with the Australian Chamber Orchestra, one of the greatest chamber orchestras on earth. I think the score and the music in this film are the thing that, that takes it to that next level. How's that, Archie? We're good to go. The music for River is divided up into original score by Richard Tonetti, Piers Burbrook de Vere and William Barden on one hand, as well as existing classical and concert music. One function of music in the film overall was to create a sense of flow when we needed it, so that when we do get to something like the climactic dam sequence in the film, we're able to cut that flow off and experience this feeling of stasis and the feeling of the world out of balance. Often it's not the river that makes for the great landscape, it's the landscape around it as well. Mountains exist on their own terms, whereas rivers are reliant upon the landscape surrounding them. So the flowing nature, the ever-changing nature of, of rivers made it more challenging to thread that needle. The unique challenge has been knowing that we were going to have to take this uh, as a roadshow and play live. We knew very early on that the ACO had specific restrictions around how many players they could tour River live with. I don't mind restrictions like that. Actually, I find them quite liberating. I didn't have a 500-piece orchestra. When you've got a large symphony orchestra, you can use four horns and some brass to create the big epic effect. When you've just got strings and electronics, you're really forced to be original, actually. Challenges make you think differently. The function of original score in the film is to point to human intervention and human involvement. So for instance, when it comes to illustrating the industrialization of rivers for our purposes, as we see these machines and tractors and pipes and factories and canals and industry begin to accelerate, proliferate, original score really steps up and gives us that feeling of being locked in, of being stuck in the march of progress. When approached, the first thing I thought of was, well, let's try to use Johnny Greenwood's water. I think it was 2007 that I got to know Johnny Greenwood as a composer, along with many other people in the world who sat there gobsmacked at the end of There Will Be Blood and after the Radiohead tour of 2012, Johnny and his family stayed in Australia. And lo and behold, Johnny wrote us this intricate, exquisite piece, and he entitled it Water. Early on, he decided that he wanted to have Tambor, the Indian beautiful drone that you'd recognise immediately. Eventually, we found the right spots for it, and in the most opposite of places, an exploration of the rituals of water in India. The function of classical music in the film is to really paint this vivid picture of pristine wild nature. In the case of the J.S. Bach, it's used for the birth sequence in the film, where we see glaciers beginning to melt and the first river begins to flow. Richard is endlessly fascinated with finding new ways to explore Bach's music. And in the case of this film, he took a piece of music that was originally written just for one violinist and arranged it out for string orchestra. It's modular, so it's based on a four bar phrase and it's the bass line that creates this module. It's based on variation, so you can move those blocks around quite satisfactorily. 
And it was a fun thing to do. And the modular nature of it meant that we could grab from two thirds of the way through and put it here. It's the birth of rivers. It starts small and then grows into something that is overwhelmingly epic in form and texture, even though it's written originally for a solo violin, such as the genius of Bach. The thing that it did for me the first time I saw it was it, it let me become the river. You go from being the glacier to being the river tearing down the hill. I always wanted to have J.S. Bach respected in a film. So I'm really delighted with that.